Thank you for coming. Uh, last day after lunch is not very easy to come here. Uh, the topic of this talk is about integration and the existing solution and development on constrained IoT devices. Uh, this job is being done by uh, by me and uh, Tushar and the uh, ARM team. Uh, I'm based in Lisbon, Portugal. I've been working with Linaro for some time. Uh, and now I'm working in ARM landing team and to try to, to bring these, these solutions to, to upstream. And um, been working with Tushar at ARM, uh, which uh, is on the IoT platform team. And uh, we're trying to more or less create um, a reference platform for these kind of devices. Uh, the outline for this talk is basically we'll be talking about why the motivation for these IoT systems for them to be created and existing. A simple hardware of system overview regarding a platform that is more or less like an example that we are working on. Um, try to define the constraints and um, the, 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 what is a rich IoT the platform, and then we go to the software side of stuff and um, overview and uh, explain more or less like the tenification integration parts that we have done to to reach the the um, the solution that we are halfway there, um, and uh, we have a small demo only to to show you that something is working <laughs> already. Uh, some future work that we intended to do, and Q&A. So basically, uh, we try to, to oh, sorry, we try to to find uh, the motivation for these kind of systems, and uh, why there is a demand on this kind of of platform. Uh, basically, it looks like. Uh, there is uh, a, ten, a necessity to, to have um, offload for several parts of the, the workload in IoT, and you can have uh, Cortex A as uh, your application. And um, these increase and the wider the range of application that a IoT device can have. So, um, also with that in mind. Um, uh, security is also a lot of on, on the news today, and uh, basically we will try to, to show what in this aspect can be uh, increased and uh, updated on this field also. And why Linux and try to, to, to make it uh, on these kind of systems also to make it work and so on. So. In here, oh, sorry. In here is more or less like a outline of uh, hardware uh, system of review. This is a, an example. is a, a platform that ARM developed. It's called Corestone 700, and it basically has a secure enclave, class M. Normally, it's an M0 device. Then it has uh, firewalls between all the components in the system. I have an A class subsystem. In this case, in this platform, is a A5 or A32. You can have both. And you can have um, a variety of M, Cortex M doing the, um, the, the, all the, 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 the tasks that you want and need to. To, to do even in uh, real time constraints and so on. So basically they they are they have a firewall a P firewall dividing all these access and the, the normally is the firewall is set up by this securing Clive that set up everything including memory and RAM and, uh, and ROM and what can see what and so on. Um, it's uh, a constraint system in, in regarding the specifications. Uh, and 
this is basically what is used. So we try to reach to a definition of what a tiny system would be. And um, in this case, uh, we try to constrain the memory to four, eight megabytes because four, really the workload that you can do on four it, with Linux in class A, um, it's really limited. Um, eight on the on the flash to allow you to have a more robust OTA system like A and B image. So and you have this this kind of a mix between the Cortex A and M's doing different kind of of workloads in the in your your system. And uh, this can be customized for um, IoT agents that normally will be running and um, you can have different SOC uh, solutions based on this kind of architecture. Uh, regarding software uh, s uh, overview, so on the secure enclave, w we can have a, a, a firmware, a boot F firmware. We are trying to, to, to port it, TFM also, to run in here. So this will be the, the responsible to set up and put everything in memory and then we'll take the other CPUs from reset state. And um, the communication between these devices is handled by a message handling unit. So, and on software level you communicate it using, for example, OpenM is what we have today. Does it mean that needs to be the solution for this? Um, so then you have the, the class A where you can have uh, some Trusted service uh, in the trusted execution. You, Linux kernel with XIP uh, executing place, rootfs and an IoT client, for example. Uh, and then you can offload to the Cortex M's the, um, what the, the, the any other workloads that you can have it. Um, so. What we tried to do here was, in the f this first stage, was to integrate already stuff that is do you uh, there out there and try to make the integration. So we started using um, try to unify inside ARM uh, the um, the build system. So Yocto was select for this task. Uh, we created our own um, our own distro around it. And try to build the image using the tools that Yocto allowed us. So we have, we at the end we have that image that you can see there. Uh, so we, the, the output image you can see that the kernel XIP, more or less 2.2 megs. Uh, the weak image, uh, it's 8 megs because we are using all creating all the partitions that we need in there. So it's using it all. Uh, space that we have, um, but the Chrome FS XIP is 1.8 megs. Uh, regarding the kernel, we are trying to use uh, what it's upstream. We don't have any special kernel in here. Um, we didn't change nothing yet, but as we will try to improve this kind of uh, tinification we will for sure do uh, something more extensive on this on this part but um, um, so we needed to have some options to disable uh, for example multi arch in arms because with that we cannot use kernel XIP we try to reduce uh, uh, the, the sets of CPUs that we support on this configuration uh, we enabled some too, and um, uh, you use a very reduced F config. So this is more or less like what we have the results of a run or after a boot of a system. You can see that uh, the total. This is the kernel memory line, and this is the, the free command after the system is running. So we, without any loads, uh, it's needs to be said but uh, we have a system with 1.8 and um, uh, a lot of not a lot of memory available but we can run uh, applications in there. 
So regarding the root file systems, we choose ChromeFS because it allows us to use XIP um, also for the for the root FS. Um, so we choose it. We want to thank Nicolas Pitre it's over there <laughs> in the back for his work on this on this uh, part. Uh, it's working out of the box, very very good. So we didn't have any issue with this. So it has direct uh, access flash. Doesn't go with r the RAM and, and caches and uh, everything. You can just uh, overwrite and go over that, and you don't need to to increase your RAM uses because of this. Uh, so, for the read-write file system, um, we were looking for solutions also, but um, one of the file systems that um, looked better for us and it's more compact and is really it's done more in taking in account and it was development thinking on real-time OSs, so memory allocations are really uh, little and you can more or less know what you will expect at the end of the day. We choose this little FS. It's a ARM uh, uh, file system that uh, is being used on several real time OS. Um, it has all these features that normally a, a good uh, file system for this kind of devices needed to be. It's uh, power loss resilient, we are leveling and bounded. Um, it has a design and it's a block pair update. It's very compact and it's very, it's easy to, to, to use in this kind of environment. Uh, right now I'm trying to port it from scratch to Linux, halfway there, a little bit more. So we'll try to upstream it, let's see if it will land it there or not. But we will try to, um, to make some measurements and see uh, even though the, the, the specification also for this file system is evolu in evolution, we'll try to, to, to implement it and try to bring it as a kernel. Uh, nor, uh, spy nor. Nor, nor. Yeah, uh, only 8 megs of nor flash uh, we are charging. So this is halfway there. Um, just adding some some more and then do all the tools that we need to create so to have it on the, on upstream kernel uh, we need to have uh, fuzzers we need to to create a lot of user land tools that support and test all this kind of 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 system uh, so i'll try to to show you uh, it's just running on so basically um you can see this. Okay. So basically, ARM has his own models. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows what models are more or less like QMUs, but ARM has a, a, a concept of emulation of their uh, systems uh, using software. So this is basically running on um, the platform that I told you, ARM uh, Core Zone 700 uh, FVP. And um, I will just uh, run. Um, the image that uh, that uh, we saw there. So I, I will try to explain. So this is basically in the middle. You have the um, the, the the two. Uh, this is a Cortex A32 running in emulation, and on top you have the Cortex M0 running. The Cortex M0 there. It's the secure enclave that just uh, allowed the the A from reset. And you have an M3 in there that it's uh, not out of reset. Um, so I will uh, just let me try to take these away from your front. So this is the, the, um, the logs of the um, secure enclave. So the secure enclave of the boot ROM on the secure enclave just loads everything in memory, the BL32, the TB, and, um, and then uh, it brings out the OS from reset 
And then this is the, the, the boot log of the kernel. Uh, with this, with this image, it has, it has, uh, so it's a constraint system, but, uh, you can see that, um, you have, and this is, this image is completely built with the Yocto. This is available for you to download, to build from scratch and everything. Uh, regarding the model, that part I don't know. This is, you need to, to check up in ARM uh, how to get the model. It's not so easy I, as I believe. And um, basically that's um, uh, the system that we have run. Then after two, to have more, uh, more, um, uh, sorry, more features, we, for sure need to increase here the memory usage and uh, the for sure to add some uh, dynamic on the system but as a, a reference booting system this is what we uh, reach now um let me change here so regarding what we will do next um we, for sure, finishing and try to upstream LittleFS if there is interest to, to, to have it in a kernel. Uh, I think I think will be, uh, I saw, for example, yesterday a presentation from Airbus where they also have something like this interest. Instead of M class devices, they have R class devices to offload critical stuff to Cortex R's in there. Uh, so it looks like uh, there is interest in these kind of systems and this kind of, uh, and the, even the Cortex R that they are using are MMU less. So a file system like that maybe makes sense on that, on a system like that. Uh, there are a lot of compilation optimizations that we can do. Uh, we will start maybe try to use Clank to, to use LTO jointly with them too. Also, uh, their ARM team, there is development uh, feature for Clank that is basically outline. It's more or less like the inverse of the inline to save space. So they already reach good results in Zephyr. 10% reduction in size. So looks like promising stuff in there also. They didn't try on Linux kernel um, or uh, so, but maybe that can be also a, a good, a good uh, optimization part. And then when we reach to some specific workload necessity, we can target and um, try to, to make it really, really optimization on that workload. Right now, this is a reference platform and um, it's not specific to any, any uh, workload, but we, we trying to, to to make as ARM is uh, a generic platform, so we won't have it um, like that. Uh, so basically, that's it. Uh, showing the work that we've been being done on this on this kind of. You can um, you can have all these uh, in here. You have the resources where you can. Fetch, there is a, um, a complete um, Yocto build uh, layers. You have a meta arm layer in top, you have a meta core stone 700 and <laughs> layer in there. You just need to, to fire up the, the normal Yocto commands and you in the end will reach uh, an image like the ones that I so, show you. Uh, and you can also check the product specifications that ARM already have in there. Uh, regarding ChromeFS, GitHub from Nicholas Pitt have the tools and have the, the what you need to know. And LittleFS, it's on the ARM embedded uh, tree. He has a, a very nice comprehension spec and uh, description of the of the of the file system, so it's really well documented. Um, and so, basically, that's it from our side. Questions? 
Martí. Yeah, but since I don't know uh, what Kimu has uh, in terms of running this kind of uh, stuff like two M's and uh, MHU communicating between, I don't know the emulation part, uh, if it is ready for this kind of, sorry. Ah, okay, okay. So the question was um, uh, if we thought to run this on Kimu instead of using ARM specific models that are not so available to everyone. Um, and my question is, we didn't try it and uh, uh, I don't know if it is prepared KMU to have all this infrastructure that we need to, to emulate all this software. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, we, we use, for building, we use the, um, as main distro, it's on top of uh, Pokey Tiny. Basically, it's, uh, if you go with Yocto, you have Pokey, and then there were work to create a tiny image. It's Pokey Tiny, and this generated uh, with uh, BusyBox and so on, so. <coughs> a muzzle, muzzle. It was on the slide, I forgot to, to, to tell, but it's on, it was on the slide, it muzzle. On the on this. Uh, you mentioned that you're doing root uh, root FS and maybe root FS. Can you talk about what kind of you're doing that and what you're doing right now? Sorry? Sorry. You mentioned that you're doing your my uh AB root FS. Oh. Can you talk more about that? Yeah. The, that it will be the we are so basically that is a, a a way to do the OTA, the upgrade. So basically uh, we are, um, our image could fit in four megs of Spinor. We are just giving eight to guarantee that if anyone wants to use that kind of OTA. Right, but how are you going to is my question. No, we are not, we are not, we don't have an OTA. That was my question. Okay, thanks. We don't have that. I think that is very specific to the implementation. That's the, the other case where. No, not that. Not that. Did you, did you count in the original, uh, shall I say, specs uh, for software update? Because usually that means you would want an updated system, but you also need to account for the fact that that new image needs to be stored somewhere. So you've got Yeah. So basically, with um, with access with the Spinor directly as a um, uh, 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 mapped in memory mapped uh, Spinor, so uh, the, spy, uh, the Spinor is memory mapped. So you, you can, if you have AB system, you can uh, directly download it, or because these are um, XIP, so it's uncompressed and uh, everything. So it needs to fit in there, and uh, uh, if everything goes wrong, you still have. But if you go. I think on this system it makes sense to have an AB uh, AB OTA solution. Hello. Are you considering to modify uh FanFS to uh, only compress or to compress the blocks that you don't use and only uncompress the XIP blocks that you do use, like we've done the AFFS files? Uh I yeah, yeah, it's already there. Yeah. Yeah, let me take you, a mic to you. So, okay, maybe I can tell a bit about ChromeFS because uh, I'm the author of those modifications. So the thing is, within the file, you can mark part of the file that you want the kernel to, you, to access with XIP. So for example, if you have an, hel an elf executable, the uh, read-only segment will stay in flash and will be stored there uncompressed, whereas the data segment which is modifiable, so it has to be loaded in RAM, that part will be compressed on the flash. 
since you have to copy it anyway, so why not store it compressed? So the, the tool that creates the image right now, it has the ability to detect those segments in the ELF format, mm -hmm. but it could be extended for other file formats. For example, if you want to notice that you have a, a JPEG file which is already compressed, you don't have to try to compress it again so it can be accessed with XIP. <coughs> So, so, so all those things are already upstream. They are, are in the tool as well. Is it each block or just the ELF section? That's, it, it it's like. each block which are part of the, the uh, some of the ELF sections. So you can do it block by block? Yeah. Ah. So I guess it needs to be in the tool. It, it's, it's in the tool right now, but the only thing I implemented is to decide which block are part of uh, specific elf sections. Okay. So but, but it can be adapted to whatever you want. So it's done. It's there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there and there. To share. You have the. No. The first, you to share. Can you say anything about the targeted fault cost? No. No, I'm not. Uh, too shy, too shy. Uh, have you ever considered about using uh, unikernel to for the size reduction? Sorry. Uh, unikernel. <laughs> Maybe wrong place. <laughs> I, I, I ask the question. Wrong place. Okay. Never forget about that. Uh, any other questions? Mm. So. Uh, so basically, for upstream, just missing little fs. Everything else is already. So you can boot it with this is on Linaro uh, repos. If you go. Uh, Git Linaro landing teams working. You can grab all the source code that I'm running here. You can grab all. It's built from source, built from scratch. Everything is upstream. Okay. The only thing missing that is also not running on my demo <laughs> it's little FS support. It's the only thing that is not running. Everything else you can download it with the, the source code and everything is upstream. Even support for this kind of platform is on TFA already. So it's upstream on TFA. You would. We have two or three out of three patches. Only to to make some last-minute changes on memory addresses and so on that we moved around a little bit to to fit on on these. But you can go and check the Yocto layer that has all the recipes, and you see that all um, all rep repos are upstream repos. We don't have anything. We are working to create a meta arm. It's already you have a mailing list on meta arm called uh, on uh, Yocto open embedded called, and it's uh, already I think there is already a, um, a placeholder for meta arm layer. It will be upstream to open embedded real, real soon. It, right now it's on there because we are merging also other um, arm. Other, other departments also had their um, implementation of the same recipes, so we are trying to, to join everything to go to openembedded.org to have that. Currently, everything is in Linaro repos. Everything will be moved to Yocto, and MetaArm will be the layer where you will find all the ARM-related recipes. Yeah, and we will try also to port all other um, platforms uh, from ARM. To the, to be upstream directly to open embedded. We use this platform for our development, but the changes are really generated. Yeah. Are there already some socks available? FPGA landed uh, last week in our tables. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is more uh, ARM than also software. 700 is a reference platform. You can contact ARM actually. <laughs> 
to <laughs> buy that. And uh, there is a PGA for that and there is a model for that. So. Yeah, yeah, we have a couple of partners <coughs> using this same architecture. You can go to those pages and I think it will drive you through. Yeah, you already have some marketing stuff in there and you can search in there. Uh, any? Other question? So, looks not. So, thank you very much. Thank you.